Hello everyone! So Avengers Tower has finally returned uh, for the first time after almost six months. Um, I don't know if I've said it before, but I will say now that Avengers Tower is my favorite game mode. I like to think of it as Blitz if Blitz was actually good, because Avengers Tower tests your entire roster's strength and depth, as well as your ability to use them efficiently. So because of that, it boosts my ego when I perform well in Tower. That said, um, my total collection power now is 19.5 million compared to the 13 million I had in April when Avengers Tower first came around. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of Gear 16s or Dormammu or uh, an overbuilt Darkhold or Unlimited or Bionic Avengers or all the new stuff that's come around since then, uh, which for me also includes that whole bunch of Gear 16s, uh, maybe check out my 13 million power run. Uh, or a climb of tower from April. Uh, in this run, uh, I now have 43 Blitz teams compared to whatever I had last time. Uh, I think it was 37 or 38. Uh, I have 215 characters because I spent 6,000 cores earlier on Spider-Man 2099 orbs, so he became my 215th character for a 43rd Blitz team. So day, day zero, which is what I'm calling the three-hour window uh, that Scopely accidentally gave us to do battles uh, before getting our cooldowns reset. Uh, during that window, I just uh, won the first 43 floors with a Blitz team, basically. Uh, and it's pretty boring watching my Blitz teams destroy all those lower uh, power uh, floors. So I'm starting here with what I'm calling day one, the first actual day of battles, starting at floor 44. Now, starting at for floor 44, I used a team that I've tried several times against this floor, both in the April and February runs of Adventure Tower, uh, because, well, it I thought it would work, and this time I was actually correct. Uh, Killmonger uh, and Taskmaster with their reworks actually completely destroy uh, Loki before he gets to mind control and kill someone, and then Taskmaster's blinds. Um, if he gets the Thors, which he should, because his ult blinds three enemies, so chances are, the chances of uh, one Thor being the one who doesn't get blinded is not that high, thankfully. And then uh, the reworks for Killmonger and Taskmaster are enough to overcome the changes made to Thor and Hulk. For Floor 45, uh, I discovered back in February uh, an extremely compelling gameplay strategy. Just clone a boatload of Emmas. Uh, that was a joke. It's not very fun. But uh, what I used to do was run Marauders with Falcon, uh, use Falcon's turn, turn meter gain on his special to offset uh, or to outpace the enemies, basically, and build a faster uh, stack of Emma clones. Now I'm not using Falcon, I'm using Madeline Pryor for the damage boost, the focus boost uh, to the Marauders, as well as um, the ability block that our ultimate gives. And then after that, it's just figuring out how to outpace the, uh, just, yeah, it's just a battle of outpacing uh, and building more Emma clones, which I'm going to fast forward through because it is extremely boring.
Okay, now for 446. Um, this one's not particularly interesting. Um, I just picked probably one of my weaker teams that is still capable of beating this and I won't really probably be able to use later, which is my Inhumans. Basically, it's just survive until Black Bolt gets his ultimate off, kill everyone, the end. That's really not that interesting, so um, I can pretty much fast forward through this entire uh, floor. Now, just like with floor 46, on floor 47, I'm just basically trying uh, the lowest possible team I think I can get away with, and this time I really did cut it close. Um, I tried a Dark Hunters with Hella, and my Dark Hunters are only geared to 12, so it was a very risky play to say the least. Um, but uh, this did get lucky enough to win. Floor 48 is one of the easier ones. Uh, the two Kree Nobles are minions, they're very easy to handle, and the Nebulas, without any Infinity Watch allies to really do anything for, they're also pretty useless. So I just bring in Zemo Hydra. Uh, my Zemo is gear 16, but uh, if, you've, if, if you've seen my uh, playlist from uh, April with my less TCP Zemo at that point is only gear 15 and like 150k or something, and he just still destroys it just the same. So this one is just a really easy floor. All we care about for Mission 49 is a team that can survive the opening barrage from Zemo and Surfer, ideally with as few ability blocks as possible. So that just brings us to the Secret Avenger trio. Um, if they're about 500k or higher is what I've seen them work with. Um, the 500k is of course in my own video from uh, six months ago, but here I just use my Secret Avengers plus two garbage characters and uh, you can watch as they just destroy this. A word of warning, the team I'm about to load in for mission 50 is going to lose. Um, I don't think they lost because I played them badly, but um, I do think I got super unlucky with my Heroes Guardians here. So um, uh, don't use Heroes Guardians here, uh, it, it's too RNG dependent, just uh, skip this section if you don't want to watch my Heroes Guardians lose. Um, and I think this was a mistake because as much as I thought Heimdall clearing stealth would be useful here, uh, there was a later floor where I really regretted not having them, and I'll mention it when we get there. So after that catastrophic failure with my Heroes Guardians, I decided to take a closer look at what remaining floater characters I had 
uh, and jump cut to this. I, I hadn't really planned Doom or Kestrel into any of my upcoming notes, and I realized, okay, let's just stick Falcon on there, uh, get some turn meter off the bat because the hero, uh, because the X-Men spawn with defense up, and win because Fury with the speed bar tiebreaker makes all of them faster than Phoenix. Now, I did screw up here. Uh, instead of ulting Phoenix, I didn't realize I would one-shot her. I should have uh, ulted Colossus, um, and that way Wolverine wouldn't get turn meter here and bleed out a bunch of people. But in the end, uh, Kestrel and Doom can really... Uh, can, they can utterly wreck this node, and uh, yeah, that's it. For floor 51, there's Emma and there's Black Widow, and Black Widow's special is going to give speed up to all Avengers, which includes Captain Sam. So because of that, it's really hard to find a team that's going to break through them before Captain Sam ults. So the way I, I like to play this is to find a team that will survive Captain Sam's ult and then uh, strike back very hard, which um, after I find X-23 is going to be this team. Uh, what I like to call X-23 factor because it's X factor with X-23. Uh, basically, they will uh, tank Captain Sam's ult, uh, Falcon's ult, and go, uh, Ghost special, and then just blast everything to pieces. For mission 52, uh, well, I use Shadowland. Originally, I was going to drop Electra from Shadowland, insert Dormammu for a Blitz team I like to call Shadorm, uh, which is very consistent in Sim Blitz, but that's not what I need my Shadowland to do here. Uh, I realized that uh, I could use my Shadowland here on a floor that I hadn't actually really planned another team for. Uh, I could use my Shadowland here, and that would free up Dormammu for another purpose, and you'll see why that actually becomes very relevant. So here I kill Scientist Supreme, first, and then um, I kill Psylocke. So once those two Cleanser, Reviver issues are out of the way, uh, Shadowland can pretty easily actually outsustain the uh, Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvels because, or at least my Shadowland can outsustain because I have a really big Night Nurse and uh, White Tiger, and then Moon Knight, Electra, and Daredevil can ping pong up and down over 50% to try and charge Night Nurse with Speed Bar. Uh, after that, it's a uh, pretty uh, easy battle, although it just takes a little bit of time. Mission 53, uh, I just brought out the mirror match. I pulled out my Loki and uh, Loki to break the tiebreaker on Cloak, make my Cloak faster than the enemy uh, Ghost Rider and Deathpool, and added Star-Lord for the ability energy and extra blinds just for good measure. Um, this is something I was running uh, pre before. I've, wrecked, I've destroyed this floor with Loki New Warriors on multiple occasions on previous towers as well. Um, it's all you really need is a little bit of luck with uh, Cloak putting out some a good amount of blinds and defense downs, and then a dagger and uh, and death pool will just uh, kill everybody after that. Uh, if you don't have many blinds on the first turn, um, I was lucky and had like four blinds. But if you didn't have many blinds and you needed a certain few characters blinded, you can also use death pool special instead of her ult. That's just a minor note. Um, the mirror match is really super easy, especially if you have like gear 16 new warriors like I do.
So for floor 54, just like the previous one, I'm going to be running the mirror match with a tiebreaker. Um, I like to, uh, I, I, did, I did this once last uh, tower because I used Sabertooth on an earlier floor. And um, I decided, oh, I'll just stick in Cable for a tiebreaker. And I did the same thing here. Um, uh, if you have Cable to ensure your Lady Deathstrike goes first, that guarantees that she will be able to rewind the enemy Lady Deathstrike in Omega Red. And then it's just a very easy... Uh, uh, mirror match with the speed advantage on the player side and then there's not much else to say that's it Floor 55, in my opinion, is pretty easy if you have the classic counter, which in my book is the symbiotes. Uh, with the symbiotes, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Fantastic and Human Torch are pretty squishy, so you can kill one of them fast for turn meter, and then uh, you also get turn meter off the Doom bot, and then the rest is super easy uh, to just uh, keep Doom and Invisible Woman and the thing under control and slowly kill them. I actually screwed this one up. You'll see later I decided to ability block Invisible Woman turn one, thinking I'd have enough time to uh, stop Doom from ulting. I was wrong. Uh, just uh, do the smart thing. Uh, probably what I'm, you might be able to find a much better, cleaner run in my, in an earlier video from the, or one of my April videos. Uh, just save the ability block for turn two and then use it on Doom uh, before he ults and then stun Invisible Woman with Symbiote Spider-Man. Don't do what I did here, it's much more tedious and much more risky. So floor 56 is the one that made me realize, wow, it was a good idea to free up Dormammu. Since I'm not using Dormammu with my Shadowland, I could bring along four random characters with Dormammu and completely crush this floor because Dormammu shuts down, Nebula and Gamora assists, and there really isn't that much else to say about it except, you know, just get some speed. As soon as Dormammu reaches his ultimate ability, it's game over. So that's all I had to do here. Back in April, I thought the most efficient way to beat floor 57 was with Eternals and then just three other characters along for the ride. And once again, I did the exact same thing as I did in April. I brought the Eternals and then the three X-Force characters who have not yet been used uh, to fill up the remaining spots. And I'm happy to say it makes this floor extremely trivial. Uh, Eternals are very powerful. Icarus has 126 speed, so he's fast and Kestrel. Uh, Surfer also has 126 speed, so it's a coin toss, but it doesn't matter because Icarus will just blast everything and don't overthink this one. It's a complete joke. For floor 58, honestly, I think the ideal way to play this is just treat it like that second mutant node back in Doom 2. Um, in Doom 2, the one where you have X-Factor, and then you just... Uh, hit multiple man forever until you're astonishing wipe everything because multiple man summons feed jubilee passive uh you don't need one million power astonishing they can certainly just punch across from like a 600 or 700 level it, it's not that hard don't overthink this treat it like that old mutant node and uh keep a, a splashing area attacks onto multiple man to trigger uh, uh dup dupes and jubilee passive just handles the rest
Okay, now at this point, by the we're already in the late fifties, early sixties. At this point, most of the teams are going to be some of my uh, most developed teams, and uh, there won't be that much to say. For floor fifty nine, I I personally find the most appropriate counter is uh, Black Order. Uh, Black Order just hit one of the astonishing under fifty percent health with Thanos and Proxima, uh, trigger a Beast Alt, Thanos flip everything, and it, it's a straightforward win from there on out. Floor 60, I decided to experiment. I don't think it's that much of an experiment. It's pretty well known that they should, in theory, work. Um, I just use Young Avengers here. Uh, Echo should disable the assists from both Nebulas, uh, which makes, uh, your, the, makes the player team receive a lot less damage. And it's a pretty easy win because Young Avengers are great. I don't know what else to say. Now at floor 61, uh, I decided, okay, I want a team that's faster than uh, Adam Warlock and Captain Sam. So I brought up my underdeveloped Gamma team. Uh, Red Hulk is faster than both of them, so he could do a double rewind, and the rest should be pretty straightforward. Uh, my Gamma team is somewhat underdeveloped because I only just unlocked Brahmin, Braun and Abomination. And it's because my Gamma team is only, well, not even 400k that I don't trust them at any higher uh, floors than this. So I just decided to use them here. It felt the most fitting. I think it was the right decision. Moving on. Okay, so I ended up choosing Uncanny X-Men for floor 62. My thought was, well, Storm special is an unavoidable stun, or undodgeable stun that'll shut down the ghost and then Cyclops and Phoenix can kill him. It wasn't a bad train of thought, but I think it ended up being a mistake. I think I should have saved my Uncanny X-Men for floor 63 and used on this floor instead the team that I ended up trying first on floor 63. Um, by the way, I'm saying this, you can clearly tell that the first team I ended up using on 63 did not work and that team was Bionic Avengers, I should have used them here, and Uncanny on 63 instead. here on floor 63 you can see is when I start to regret having uh, unsuccessfully and riskily tried out my hero's guardians on the earlier floor because with Heimdall's ability to uh, shrug off blinds they might have been a really good option for this floor. Uh, instead I ended up trying my Bionic Avengers because of their uh, opening attacks being uh, unavoidable or cannot miss 
And that's another problem because uh, there's two toads. And if their assists hit the wrong, te wrong teammates of mine, that can uh, completely screw over the attack. So you see that unfortunately, Magneto, so his blind targeted Vivian. And with Viv getting slowed, that means I couldn't have a, a turn one flip before Iron Man and Vision. And the slow also just means the Toads get to their second turns a lot faster. So um, the crits gave him speed up for that problem also. So Bionics are not a good idea here. I should have either used my Uncanny X-Men with Psylocke and used Bionics on the previous floor or made sure not to screw up and try Heroes Guardians here. I'm gonna to try uh, to get a little more experience on these uh, on this 62-63 uh, stuff, uh, either when this uh, run of tower and the, the practice run ends or when the real run starts. Um, hopefully I get a little more insight and a little more ideas uh, when that comes around. And because my Bionic Avengers failed on this floor, I ended up having to pull uh, the team that I was originally planning for the Young Avengers on floor 67. So I had to pull my uh, Unlimited X-Men to, to use here um, because Dazzler eats blinds for breakfast. And uh, after that, of course, it's a super easy win. But it's a little annoying that I wasn't able to uh, figure out a more efficient way without any mistakes to beat this because then the original plan was to use unlimited X-Men on floor 67 uh, and then on floor 68 I would have my Darkhold and then I could try out here uh, my Heroes for Hire on floor 69 because Heroes for Hire can beat that floor but I've never gotten it to work so it would have been an opportunity for me to test things on the last possible floor I would have reached. It annoys me a bit but that's what the practice run is for now. It's for trying this stuff out, um, and hopefully I can make my play more efficient next time around. So for the floor 64 Black Order here, if anyone remembers how the Black Order arena meta slowly died over time, Two of the nails in the coffin for it were Doc Ock and Silver Surfer. So I'm going to be using a Doc Ock Silver Surfer sort of hybrid legendary soup team against this Black Order uh, because I don't want to use a stronger team and I don't have my Black Order available to do a mirror match. So this felt like the most efficient way to do it. And this is one attack that I am happy with. All right, now onto floor 65. Um, there was a team I wanted to try out here, but I don't have a ch way to do it anymore. Uh, I think for floor 65, like I think this was back in February actually, so I don't even have a video of it, but I'm pretty sure I managed to beat this floor using Nick Fury in place of Iron Fist on Heroes for Hire. But I don't have that option because I did use Nick Fury earlier on the floor 50, so I can't do that which means I have to try something else. And I just said, okay, screw it. I'm not gonna make it any further. So I'm just gonna throw my uh, infinity watch against this. And you can obviously figure that with as strong as infinity watch still are, they handled this floor with extreme ease. So for floor 66, the Ravagers, out of curiosity, I actually decided to give my Heroes for Hire a shot. Um, 
I wasn't expecting them to work. Um, my real plan for 66 is going to come after. It's Web Warriors. But uh, I, I decided my Heroes for Hire aren't going to get used anyway. So I decided to give them a try. There's actually a pretty good chance they would have worked if Star-Lord T'Challa hadn't one-shot Iron Fist right off the bat. But um, um, the, you can skip this part. Just, just go to the part where I use my Web Warriors to counter the Ravagers instead. So unfortunately, at floor 67 here, the only meta team I got left is Darkhold. Uh, they will obliterate these Young Avengers, but that means they're the last team I get to use, and this is the last floor I get to climb in this rotation. My original plan was to use Unlimited X-Men here, and then I would have Darkhold in a safe win on, the, on floor 68, and then I could experiment with Heroes for Hire on floor 69, but unfortunately, because I screwed up on floor 62 and 63 and had to redelegate my uh, unlimited X-Men to an earlier floor, uh, it killed the chances of that plan working. Still, I think 67 floors is, uh, I'm, I'm still proud of my 67 floors climbed in two rotations, so uh, that's obviously why I'm still sharing this. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, and if so, uh, please let me know using uh, the comments, the likes, or the subscription uh, feedback options below. Uh, Thank you for watching, and I will see you probably for the next Tower video soon. Thanks for watching.